Hi, Christine. Thanks for sending your questions. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you sent. I think you wanted me to do 14 and 26. Um, I don't see a 14. Just go ahead and resend that problem if you'd like me to answer it. I'd be happy to answer 26 for you, though. So first, we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph the lines, and then we'll take a look at what the area is. So let's do the easy ones first. The first line they give us is y equals 0. So if we're on the y-axis, let's say we're at y equals 2 right here, then we count down y equals 1. This would be y equals 0 right here. If we kept going down, we'd be into the negative numbers. So y equals 0 always corresponds to the x-axis. So let's go ahead and mark that off. It's not going to be exact, but you get the point. And now let's go ahead and graph x equals negative 2. We're going to start at the origin. We're going to move in the negative x direction two units, counting back negative 1, negative 2. And we're going to go ahead and graph that line. Now let's take a look at the one that's a little bit more complicated. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Fortunately, it's in slope-intercept form. So in slope-intercept form, the first thing that we graph is the intercept. Always, always, always graph the intercept first. This specifically is the y-intercept. So we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to go along the y-axis only. The number of units it tells us in the direction that it tells us. So it's telling us to go positive 3, so we're going to start at the origin and go 1, 2, 3 in the positive y direction. And we're going to mark a point there. We need two points to be able to graph a line. To get our other point, we're going to use the slope. You'll see up here I have some stuff written. Slope is rise over run. I'm sure you've heard that before. What this means is it's your y-coordinate over your x-coordinate. So starting from your y-intercept, make sure you start from here and not from the origin, we're going to go negative 1 in the y-direction. So the y is on top up here and the negative 1 is on top up here. So we're going to jump down negative 1. And then this doesn't have a positive in front of it, but we know it's positive 2. So we have the x on the bottom and the 2 on the bottom. We're going to go positive 2 from the point that we jump from in the x direction. One, two. And we're going to graph that point. And then we're going to draw a line through those, through those two points. There we go. So those are the lines. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second part. So first, to find the area of this triangle, we need to know the area formula for a triangle. Area equals one-half base times height for any triangle. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a better picture to figure out what B is and what H is. So once we have this table filled in, we'll know our area. Kind of graph this on a professional program. Um, usually you would need to solve for these intercepts, but I think they had you graph them just so you could kind of eyeball it. So let's go ahead and call this blue line of the triangle down here our base. And let's go ahead and call this purplish red line right here our height. And we're going to count and we're going to figure out how many units our base is and how many units our height is. So it looks like this is at about 6 right here. Looks like it's right on 6. So if we count backwards, um, I'm going to start at 0, 1, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We get, we have eight units before we hit this other place where our, um, the lines of our triangle intercept. So B is equal to eight. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our height. Starting here at zero, let's see, we have two, and it looks like it's intercepting right at 4. So we have 4 units for our height. So h is equal to 4. We're going to go ahead and plug these into our formula. 
So the area is equal to 1 half, B is 8, and H is 4. We can go ahead and cancel the 2 with the 4 or the 8 if we want. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it with the 8. 2 goes into 8 4 times. So this is the same thing as saying 4 and the other 4 is still there. And that, of course, is equal to 16, whatever your units are squared. Thanks so much for sending another question, and I look forward to answering more of your questions using SnapMath in the future.